Hi everyone, welcome back to Be Rich. Today's follow-up video, I did want to bring Shashwat with me, but unfortunately he was busy. But I didn't want to take the opportunity to talk about these things because they are relevant and they're relevant today. And as Rupesh said, you should only eat food when it's hot. So this news cycle is hot, so I need to give it to you when it's hot. I'm sorry that Shashwat could not join me, but I think I can cover these points and elucidate and enlighten you in these things before it gets too late. Rupesh has also given me a clock of 10 minutes. He said, sir, do not talk more than 10 minutes. People are very bored watching your videos, especially when you're alone. That I don't gesticulate and animate myself enough to entertain you guys. So today I will try and gesticulate and animate myself as I get through these points. One important thing one of you had commented on my video yesterday about Trump was, sir, what are you talking about this dollar being so uh, precious? You know, it is becoming stronger that Trump won the elections. They're in huge debt they have. And with this huge deficit and debt they're sitting on and uh, inflation going going to go through the roof because the Fed can't stop the spending from the government, it's all going to be calamity, doomsday scenario in the US. Well, that's when I put out this thing on Instagram saying, do you understand there are advantages to the reserve currency? And I expected a lot of you to say, yes, there is an advantage to it. But what I was surprised was a lot of you said, what are you talking about? So I thought I'll do today's video about this and explain where we are and what can happen and give some context about history and what has happened in history. First, reserve currency gives Americans a huge advantage over the rest of us. Indians do not have this, Europeans do not have this, the Japanese do not have this, nor do the Russians. Everybody in the world does buying and selling trade and we do not do this on gold, we do this on the American dollar. We all use American dollar as the reserve currency of global exchange of commerce. And that is a huge advantage the Americans have. Because of this dependence on the dollar globally, we require the dollar and we will keep buying dollar and using dollar no matter what happens in American domestic economy and their politics aside from that. Globally, we require this, so we'll keep using the dollar. So this is a huge advantage to them. Now, the next question is, how did this become the reserve currency? Was there like a global meeting? Did the UN have a council and did all of us sit around and say we vote to make the dollar the reserve currency? No, <laughs> that does not happen with reserve currencies. The way reserve currencies happens is it's like friendship. You know, you and your groups of your friends, you'll have one guy who is the most reliable guy in the group, which all of you will go to advice. All of you will call out if there's a problem in the group. He's like the dawn of the group. Same way the Americans became the dawn of the global economy, thanks to World War II. So after World War II, aftermath, the European continent as a whole was in shambles. Their economies were in shambles. Their currencies were in shambles. So America came out unscathed from World War II for the simple reason it was just too far away from the war. So physically, their factories were not bombed. They were not damaged. Their infrastructures were in place. Their resources were in place. So they took full advantage of it, telling the globe and telling everybody, don't worry, we will supply you whatever you need and you can borrow from us. And that kind of a friendship burgeoned into everyone using the dollar as a reserve currency. Then, of course, petrodollar happened and all that consecutively happened in the Nixon. You can read about it in history and Google it further. So all that cemented the US dollar as a reserve currency. So before the US dollar, was there other reserve currencies? Yes, there have been many reserve currencies before the US dollar. First, if you want to talk in history, the first one was Spain. Believe it or not, before this flood news cycle happened and all the terrible news which is happening in Spain, we pray for them. We hope they manage to recover and come back stronger as everyone does from these calamities. Spain in the 15th and 17th century, for 200 years, they were ruling the world because of the trade network Spain had. Sitting where they are sitting, if you've seen the European map, they have easy access to the Atlantic Ocean, they have easy access to the Mediterranean and Spain and Portugal together were pretty much garnering most of the wealth in global trade at that point of time. And because of global age of exploration, if you remember, how Europeans went and colonized parts of America and North South America and took all those resources and brought it back, and all that exploitation. You can read about it again if you Google it. I'm sure there are other YouTube videos which will tell you about what all how Spain became a superpower at that point of time. But their currency was considered the global currency at that point of time. What happened? A lot too many wars happened because everyone gets, you know, overconfidence once you become the top dog and you become the dawn of the group, you think you can dictate terms, that was happening. Military overreach happened and very poor financial decisions were made by the Spanish crown at the time, which led to the finally Spanish currency not being the global reserve currency anymore. It slowly faded away. What replaced Spain in the 17th century was the Dutch. The Dutch were 
coming on the heels of the Spanish, and they did took over global exploration. We all know about the Dutch East India Company, and we know about what all they did in Indonesia. If you have not don't know that, I recommend a book called Nutmeg, which you should read, which is a fabulous book about how the Dutch became powerful and what happened with the Dutch spice trade and how they exploited and became a powerhouse. There. So the Dutch ruled the global currency system for a hundred years. The Dutch Gilda, they were the ruling the roost. Then what happened? They got into unnecessary wars. As everyone who's in power thinks they can dictate terms, they tried to dictate terms. They had unnecessary wars. And the British came in competition right behind the Dutch. They saw Dutch taking advantage of global exploration, doing trade, the spices, and all this money coming for them. And the British at the time were a young you know, country with aspirations to become rich. Of course, the British East India Company came and they knocked these guys out of the place and the British Empire came into place. When British Empire came into place, of course, the sterling pound became the currency of the globe. And for the next 100 years, till World War II, the British pound was considered the standard bearer for global currency. After World War II, things got really bad for Britain because of what happened in World War II. You can Google that and read that history if you do not know. And the Suez Canal in 1950s, what happened with that? That knocked the British pound out of the reserve currency and brought in the US dollars. For the last 80 years, the American dollar has been the global reserve currency. Like I said, all this happens on the back of cooperation happens on the back of trade. This is not something which is dictated. You cannot force someone to use your currency as a reserve currency. It comes out of necessity that you need to do trade, you need to do commerce, and you need to have a common form of transfer of wealth. And the currency is chosen. Whomsoever is in power and seems to be commanding the group's attention, their currency usually gravitates towards this. So this answers the question about why can't BRICS just create a currency and become reserve currency? doesn't work like that. You can't dictate these things. Now, what will cause this American dollars to lose its reserve currency? You got to realize the American dollar is a reserve currency because it's backed by most of the developed countries in the world, which includes Europe. Europe and America have a very long lasting partnership since World War II. We have not had this kind of a long term peace in the world for such a long time. And that is coming into question now, especially after Trump's election. Trump has come and he has said he's going to pull out of NATO, he's going to pull out of the climate deal, he's going to pull out a lot of things. He wants America to withdraw from the world and go back and look inwards and not worry about the world and police the world. Great. If Americans want to do that, good on them. They voted this man because he's promised that, good for them. But the rest of the world might start looking at America and saying, okay, if that's how you feel about us, Maybe it's time we don't look at use the dollar as a global currency and each region starts fracturing and a new world order slowly starts emerging. I'm not saying the euro will become the reserve currency. I'm not saying the BRICS are going to become a reserve currency. I'm not even saying this may happen. But the writing on the wall seems to be become, becoming larger and clearer if this is the case, especially if the Americans strongly feel as a population that they want to look inwards and they want to become more protectionist and they want to focus on their own country. So that's what Trump has planned. He's planned to withdraw from all this. He's telling Europeans, take care of your own business. Don't rely on us to come and keep helping you out. Then the next thing which he wants to impose is tariffs. Americans import machinery. They import electrical equipment. They import vehicles. They import mineral fuels. They even import some oil. Though we keep on talking about them being energy independent with fracking and all that. There are certain specialty oils and they have some certain trade agreements which requires them to import oil. So they do import oil. All their pharmaceuticals is important, not all of it, some of it. I wouldn't say majority. Of course, that is why companies in India are doing very well because we export to them. So he wants to slap a tariff on all these things and this is going to create a trade war. These tariffs have they worked? The problem is even when you look back in history, the thing with tariffs is it works in the short term. And has America done these kind of tariffs? Yes, they've done this in the past. In the 1800s, when the American manufacturing industry was burgeoning and they were growing, they had tariffs to prevent their small industries from collapsing. They had tariffs at the time. For a short period of time, it worked. Then over a period of time, as their economies grew, they wanted to export more out of the US. So those tariffs all disappeared. Then the most famous one is the Smoot uh, Hallway Tariff Act from 1930. It was a tariff act which was created by the Congress to enable protecting the farmers and the manufacturers in the US. It was very short lived and some say it caused the Great Depression. Some say even if it didn't cause the Great Depression, it made the Great Depression worse. So there you go. That's what tariff does. 
as any other countries used tariffs and done this. The Japanese did the tariffs after World War II. After World War II, their country was in shambles. Everything was gone. We all know what happened after you drop two atomic bombs on a country and they lost the war. So they had imposed tariffs in Japan to help and foster their manufacturing. And once their manufacturing grew and they wanted to export more, they also got rid of their tariffs. So this kind of economic nationalism works in short term. It doesn't help in the long term. And now that we are in this kind of a global interconnected economy, no one can create anything in their country because they don't produce all the pieces, nuggets, which is required to make the product. So if you even make a product in your home country, there'll be parts and pieces which you need to import because you're not making it. All those resources are not available. So in this kind of a scenario, I don't think tariffs will work. And if anything, it's only going to create more inflation in the US and give more headaches to the Fed and the American economy. So I do not know what's going to happen. But it is all this information I wanted to give it to you so you can process it and you can keep it in mind and uh, see what has happened in history, what Trump is saying. And if he knows all this about history and we have such great advisors, why would they recommend tariffs? Because politics is different from history. Politics is uh, motivated by sh uh, short cycles. They don't care about long cycles. So I can understand. To get voted and elected into power, you have to offer all kinds of things. And most populations, people do not realize the implications of these things because they don't study history. Everyone's worried about their day-to-day -day existence and they cannot think beyond that. And you I don't expect them to. I would be in the same position as them if my day-to-day -day existence was in trouble. So next thing which I wanted to touch on, the last thing which a lot of you are asking me about is what's going to happen if all this money is leaving Indian markets. Like today also the market was correcting, the FIIs are selling and they're taking all the money to China. What may cause this to reverse? One which may cause this to reverse is we Indians decide to offer some stimulus to our economy and our government steps up and starts doing some activity to improve spending in this country. Then our earnings or our corporate earnings will go start showing going northward or showing potential of going north. And then future earnings would make sense for the price we are at. And then they may come back. Like what happened in the Chinese government offering stimulus to their population. So they've gone there flocking. The other reason why may happen now that Trump has come into power is Trump has been always in uh, not in friendly terms with China and China have not been in friendly terms with Trump. So if this is a new paradigm which we are in, this may lead to complications between China and US and lead to complications for investors, especially American investors and European investors putting their money in China, force them to pull their money out of China, even if there are opportunities there. And since they have no other opportunities to go anywhere else, they might come back to Indian shores. So this might be a scenario that might play out thanks to Trump's election. And another thing which I want to hit on was finally gold. Gold, as soon as Trump's election results were announced, gold corrected and it's even corrected in the Indian market. If you see gold bees, we've been tracking that. And a lot of you are wondering, is this a new trend where we're going to keep seeing gold prices going down or is this temporal? My opinion, what I asked my brother about this, he said this is temporal, this is not something permanent. And if anything, the way Trump has promised to increase spending, that is through tariffs and through tax cuts, he's going to stoke inflation again in the US, it's going to lead to anything but gold prices to rally and go forward and going forward. And the Fed chair has uh, got a rate cut decision to make very soon now, it was due post election, which will be happening also very soon. And most people are expecting him to cut rates at least by a quarter basis point. If that happens, gold again might rally. So whatever we have seen movement negatively in gold, I would say it's probably temporal. The long term trend for gold is it should be going up. So what you do that information is purely up to you. This is what I had to share with you as far as the election cycle is concerned, as far as tariffs are concerned, as far as uh, dollar and the reserve currency and the dollar strengthening and weakening and all this is concerned. The dollar strengthening has is helping uh, companies in India which are exporting, which is our TCS, which is our Wipros, which is our Infosys which are all the software companies and it's also going to help all our pharmaceutical companies which should uh, be helped by a dollar which is becoming more and more expensive for Indians. When you say dollar is becoming stronger that means you're getting more rupees per dollar so that is what we mean when dollar is getting stronger. So I know a lot of you are seasoned in all this and might find this information you know repetitive and boring. You are not the targeted audience for this. This video is actually targeted at people like my friend Dana and Krishna who are standing behind the camera and Rupesh who do not understand these uh, implications of Trump being elected 
and they had these questions and a lot of you had reached out to me on the instagram 52 challenge week group asking me these kind of questions so i thought i'll get a video out since i'm alone here today and i didn't have shashwat with me if shashwat was with me i'm sure he would have given more nuanced answers and probably given some food for the people who are more attuned with all this since it's a basic video i'll try and pull shashwat in again soon and have him explain in greater detail in maybe in finer points on what will happen to stocks and bonds and goals near term and long term as far as this protectionism is concerned in the us thanks for watching the video as always do like and subscribe and share it with other nascent uh, investors who might find this kind of information uh, informative and entertaining and do catch me on instagram on the 52 week challenge group which i'm there we having a lot of interesting conversations on a daily basis so if it's something which you would like to participate in do come and join us there nothing more else thank you and bye thanks for your support for birich for those who are in north india or who are outside india you have friends who know hindi or if you know hindi please subscribe to my channel paisa bolta hai i give the same content which i do in tamil in that and this is for people who want to follow me in hindi birich has slightly different content thank you for supporting birich and i'll be around here Hey guys, welcome back to Beeraj. Before we get into the video, I wanted to bring to your notice that my uncles Vinod Srinivasan and Anand Srinivasan and I have rolled out a Substack, which is basically a blog slash newsletter where we're going to post our original research onto it, and we've analyzed macroeconomic trends. And a lot of you know my uncle Anand Srinivasan and I regularly write for the Hindu, and these articles are also going to be made available for you in the Substack. The link is m o a t moat investing. dot substack dot com. You'll find it in the description and in the video right now. Um, we hope you go check it out. We've put a lot of time and effort into it, and please give us comments and feedback on what you read. Thank you. It's a great privilege and honor that so many of you in thousands have subscribed to my channel and have supported me. I have written two books in English: The Alchemy of Money and Ordinary Stocks: Extraordinary Profits. These books are published by us and are ready. If you want to procure a copy. send us a message to the whatsapp number given below and my team would respond to you if you want an amazon kindle copy you can click the link below finally those who wish to consult with me can send a mail to beerichenglish@gmail.com once again i thank you for your support if you like this video press the subscribe button of my channel hit the like button and turn on the bell notification